Long before professional wrestling was ever presented in Madison Square Garden, it could only be found in a carnival tent or a circus ring. And American pro wrestling slang owes as much to vaudevillians, no, as it does to turn of the century grapplers. I'm Mike Quackenbush, and this is Till We Make It. And if you are passionate about the craft of professional wrestling, and you're never done learning all about it, then you have arrived in the exact right place. So join the Till We Make It tribe. Subscribe down below, and make sure to enable notifications while you're at it, please. Or if you'd like to take your participation in all things Till We Make It to the next level, consider joining our community over on Patreon. I just finished releasing all 34 episodes of my podcast series, Kayfabe 2.0, the series that preceded this YouTube channel till we make it. One led directly into the other, and they're all available over there right now. Follow the link in the descriptus so that you can join us over on Patreon. And now to the matter at hand. In an age when tens of thousands of rabid pro wrestling fans routinely flock to see Wrestle Kingdom in Japan, or when tens of thousands of rabid wrestling fans flock to see the Royal Rumble here in the United States, it is easy to forget that there was a time when a full card of professional wrestling was never presented as standalone entertainment. And yet, we only have to rewind about 100 years or so to find examples of exactly that when at most, three pro wrestling matches at a time would be presented in a carnival tent or in one ring of a circus. Or other times when a single pro wrestling match would be presented either at the top or the bottom of a vaudeville bill that was otherwise filled with performers like magicians, song and dance acts, and comedians. Entrenched in these environments, wrestlers begin to absorb the jargon and the lingo from these other forms of live entertainment. And today, I want to look at a handful of the terms that pro wrestling appropriated from circus, carnival, and the vaudeville stage. And I want to extend my thanks to Wayne Kaiser of GoodMagic.com and the Ballycast for his tireless research and cataloging of these terms. Thanks, Wayne. You may know that a whole lot of pro wrestling jargon, including professional wrestling's argot, Kizarni, no, come directly from the carnival grounds. They are from our carnival roots, like... Mark. Mark is a term borrowed directly from carnival lingo. It originally referred to a literal chalk mark that would be left on the jacket of a particularly gullible customer that might make for an easy victim of carny hustles, like an unwinnable game of chance, or some other gamble meant to extract large sums of money from the customer in exchange for a relatively worthless prize. And no doubt, if you've been with me here on the Till We Make It channel for any length of time, you know that that is a term I utterly eschew because I feel like it indicates contempt for our audience. When I talk about professional wrestling's fans on this channel, I refer to them as customers. I do not use the carnival term Mark. And shill is another term we borrow directly from carnival jargon. It refers to someone who is inside the business or inside the performing troupe, but who is pretending to be an actual audience member. And this was especially relevant back in an era when betting on predetermined wrestling matches was one of the main features of wrestling in carnivals. Someone planted out in the audience, a shill could be used to sway betting one way or another among the genuine paying customers, or could actually make private bets against members of the audience knowing in advance who the winner was meant to be. If you know some lingo that pro wrestling borrows directly from the carnival, drop it for me down below in the comments section right now. One that I was surprised to learn was the origin of the term apron. That actually comes to us from vaudeville. 
In a theater setting, apron refers to the part of the stage that juts out past the performance area. Whereas in wrestling, the apron of the ring is the section of the ring outside of the ropes. So just like how in the theater setting, apron refers to a part of the stage that's outside the designated performance area, well, the same is true in the world of wrestling. The apron of a ring is part of the ring, but it is outside the designated performance area. And believe it or not, the concept of a dark match in professional wrestling entered our lingo by way of vaudeville as well. In vaudeville, it referred to any act or presentation outside of the actual show itself, like an unadvertised warm-up act. And in professional wrestling, a dark match typically refers to any presentation that is held before or after cameras are recording, and that too is typically unadvertised to the public. Mud show is slang that comes to us directly from circus lingo. And there, it refers to circuses that play chiefly in rural areas and rarely, if ever, in major cities. And although this is somewhat uncommon jargon in the world of wrestling because it has taken on an insulting tone, there absolutely are some snobs out there that will refer to independently organized wrestling cards or any organization lacking television level production values as a mud show. And the term papering the house also comes to us by way of the circus. This refers to the practice of distributing complimentary tickets to make sure all the seats are filled, thus manufacturing a full house. And this was an important practice the first night a circus came to a new town. That's when newspaper reporters were most likely to be there covering the arrival of the circus. And a choice photograph showing a completely full house went a long way to spark interest in attending the circus during its limited engagement in any given market. In addition to which, more people in the house meant more word of mouth advertising for the circuit after the fact. If you love the traditions and the heritage of professional wrestling as much as I do, well, leave a like a palooza down below and then investigate my new book, Pro Wrestling History, Six Threads and 16 Decades, is available as an ebook on Amazon or as an audio book over on Audible. And in the first of my six threads, we're going to trace our way forward across more than a century from wrestling's carnival and circus roots to WrestleMania I and the nationalization in 1985. And if you want just a little sneak preview of the kind of information I talk about in that book, click on the video appearing over here and fill your brain with even more wrestling trivia.